So now that we have a good understanding of the basic components that make up community ecology, we're going to use those definitions, those ideas, and work off of them by studying what we would call community interactions over the next couple of flowcharts. So in this first flowchart, we'll entitle it Community Interactions 1. Community Interactions Roman numeral 1. And this first flowchart on these community interactions, a big component of ecology, are going to, is going to mainly be focusing on competition. And this idea of competition is very simple. And I'm going to start it over here because I'm going to put a definition right next to it just so that it evens out and centralizes the idea. So competition can be defined as the following. And the reason why I put a number one here is because there are three main community interactions, thus three major flowcharts on community interactions that we'll be doing. The first one will be on competition. Competition is what we consider a minus minus interaction. This minus minus interaction means that, and I'm going to write that down, minus minus interaction, it's an interaction within the community that's going to be between two individuals, thus there are two minuses here, two individuals engage, so two individuals engage in this interaction of competition, and also this interaction is costly to both. And because it's costly to both, both will lose in a competition uh, scenario. There's going to be a minus-minus scenario when two individuals engage and engage in a costly situation to both. That's competition in a nutshell. When we think of competition, we have to also look at a couple of key ideas um, that's specific to competition in regards to where it's occurring. And that will be covered in the short background section of competition. In this background, what we're going to realize is that competition is mainly going to be defined as when two or more, it's not just two, but sometimes more, two or more individuals attempt to use, attempt to use, and now of course, because we're talking of community ecology, we're going to always be referring to the same resources. Resources are key in community ecology. So, we have two individuals or more attempting to use the same resources. That's when we have competition. And competition can furthermore be either intraspecific competition, so we'll call this intraspecific, or it can be what we call interspecific, two opposites. And when we mean by intraspecific and interspecific is, is it occurring within a species, intraspecific, or is it occurring between species, interspecific? And we can write that down as simply the intra would, we, would be uh, within species, so SP for one species. Interspecific, I would consider that between species, several species. So we're going to put two P's, one P because it's intra, two P's because it's inter. This idea of competition, this idea of intraspecific and interspecific competition is the number one I would consider most important determinant. So we'll call it most important what we phrase determinant. The most important determining factor is competition in community ecology. Most important determinant of two major things of the number of populations in community so remember how we mentioned populations? Well, the number of populations will be determined by the amount of competition um, and specifically the number of species as well. So um, I think we should better off, better off saying not just populations, but S, P, P for species. That's a better term here. Um, number of species in a community, also the size of the population. So two things, number of species and size of population will be directly determined by the amount of competition, whether it's intraspecific, interspecific, and how much are going to be, uh, how much we see within the community. So that's our background here that we squeeze onto the side. Um, the main idea behind competition is to understand what we call competitive exclusion. There's a competitive exclusion principle that we need to understand, and that's what the rest, the majority of the flowchart will be devoted to. So competitive exclusion, what does this mean? Where does it come from? Well, we're going to broadly define competitive exclusion as the following. 
Competitive exclusion is when two species with absolute identical niches, two species with absolute identical, absolute identical ecological niches can't coexist. They absolutely just cannot. This is a law of ecology. Can't coexist. Why? Because they are competing for the same, competing for same, not only resources, but in this situation, limiting resources. Same limiting resources. If you're competing for the same limiting resources, you cannot coexist because you have the same exact ecological niche. So, we can further understand competitive exclusion by looking at a very important and very famous experiment that proves that this is true. It's called the GF cause experiment, done by the man known as GF cause. Um, and it's going to be a major experiment that tells us that competitive exclusion exists. So, in GF cause experiment, we notice the following. Uh, in this uh, experiment, we see that this man, GF Cause, was able to look at a couple of different populations. He looked at populations, so looked at pops of similar protease. So he took two similar protease, two similar populations, and wanted to test this idea of competitive exclusion, or came up with this idea based off of this. So when you look at uh, populations of similar protease. The two uh, specific ones that he looked at um, that you should just be familiar with are Paramecium, so that's the genus, capital P, Paramecium, and then the species is specifically Aurelia, so Paramecium Aurelia, and also he looked at Paramecium, that's the still the same similar genus, uh, Paramecium caudatum. So two very similar protists. Protists are very old uh, animal-like uh, microorganisms, uh, and the specific ones were Paramecium aurelia and Paramecium caudatum. They're very similar. They're both ciliated. They have cilia, these finger-like projections, and they look quite similar to each other. What he noticed in his experiment is if you take these similar protists, meaning that they probably have similar ecological niches, they probably need the same limiting resources, you take them and you initially what you're going to do is um, grow them under different conditions. So they're grown under what he would consider different conditions. So they grow up differently from each other. So they're born in different areas, let's say, or grown up in different areas. And they are also raised separately for this reason. Because they're grown differently, they're obviously going to be raised separately. So he's keeping everything separate right now. He's not combining them just yet. Um, what he notices is that through this separate raising, through the separate rearing of these protes, these two populations, he noticed that each population grew rapidly initially, so each pop grew rapidly at first and then eventually comma they leveled off then leveled off what does that remind you of that should obviously remind you of a population that is undergoing k selection there's a certain amount that you'll exponentially grow and then you'll level off as you watch my mouse do this sigmoidal curve this logistic growth that he observed in both species separately then, in order to really show competitive exclusion, in order to really show community interactions, in order to really show a community ecological experiment, he put them together. And what he saw in this was the following. When both are grown together, when both grown together, and what we mean by both is, of course, when Paramecium aurelia and Paramecium caudatum are both grown together, what happens eventually is that Paramecium caudatum, caudatum goes extinct. It loses this competitive battle. It dies out, goes extinct. And this 
clearly proves that when two species with this identical niche, this identical niche within the same area at the same time, both grown together, when they grow up together with the same resources, with the same environment, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. Because both of these things, since they're grown together, since they're reared together, since they live their whole life together, they're not going to succeed separately. They're going to lose against each other. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. There's going to be a minus-minus interaction. There's going to be competition because both are going to be uh, competing for, or they competed for the same LR. If they competed for the same limiting resources, just like stated over here, in the same place, you know for a fact, based off of the competitive exclusion principle that we established here, two species with absolute identical ecological niches, they had those identical ecological niches because they're both grown together. So of course they're going to have the same niches. They cannot coexist, and that's exactly what he saw. So we're going to complete this experiment by saying that they can't coexist just like the competitive exclusion principle stated. So this is a good experiment to give you a real life example that the competitive exclusion principle exists and it's real. One thing that students sometimes get tripped up upon is that how is this a minus minus interaction? Paramecium caudatum of course lost, but Paramecium aurelia was the one that won. So how did both lose out in this situation? That's something that we're actually going to be looking at in the second part to the Community Interactions 1 video, and that's going to be looking at the idea of this coexisting competition that's going to be a loss for both species because we don't reach our fundamental niche in the next video. Um, that's what we're going to be looking at.